Hello everybody, John Fulford here. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. So many of y'all listened to my last podcast episode uh, entitled Sync Licensing As We Know It Is Dead. I am so glad that we're growing the community here in late 2020. So I put up, put out, put up uh, John Fulford Music Cool Chords Sound Pack Volume 1, totally free, available uh, link in the description of uh, my YouTube, the YouTube version of this podcast and in the Apple uh, show notes of this podcast. Click on the link. You don't have to put your name or your email or anything like that. You don't have to follow me on social media. Just click it. It'll download. It's audio. It's MIDI audio. You could just drop into your uh, your digital audio workstation and start working on it. MIDI, you could drop it in and adjust the tempo, the key, and the different notes. It's completely free. Also, it's royalty free. So have at it. Have at it. Have at it. I, I can't wait to um, I can't wait to hear what y'all came up with and uh you know i can't wait to do more more of those so also our amazon affiliate link if you're buying stuff on amazon go on amazon through our affiliate link so amazon pays us a small commission on whatever you buy but they don't charge you extra the money comes straight from jeff bezos it comes straight from amazon.com it comes straight from mackenzie bezos not you so it's a great way to help the channel without you having to spend any extra money that you would not already spend so what do i want to talk about today can we do something people can, can we do something together here can we make 2021 our best year ever in music are you with me on that are you with me on that i hope you're with me on that how are we going to thrive in 2021 not just survive if you just want to survive in 2021, no, I don't mean survive like, you know, health-wise. <laughs> I'm about survive in the music business. If you just want to survive, this isn't for you. I don't, even, I don't even know if you would aspire to just survive and survive, okay? I'm talking about thriving. And I'm not talking about thriving like those thrive patches that my old high school classmates sell to one another on Facebook. I'm talking about thriving, make more money land more placements, sign more deals, get more work. So how are we going to do that? Okay, I'm also going to do a YouTube video about this. It's going to be short and to the point like YouTube videos are. This is going to be more long form. If you want all the details and everything, this is the place for you. So COVID greatly changed the music business. In many, many ways. Many ways. A few years ago, when someone wanted to move from L.A. and they were in the music business, many people, not all, I know some people that did not do this, but many people kind of kept it a secret that they were moving. Right? They forwarded their 310 and their 323 area code office lines to their cell phones. So you thought they were in the office, but they're really in Nashville, not in L.A. They're really in Atlanta or Charlotte or Maine instead of L.A. They, they kept it a secret. One person I knew moved to, uh, uh, I don't want to say the exact suburb, but east of downtown Los Angeles, but uh, in a city... Kind of like Pomona. I don't want. To, it definitely wasn't Pomona, but in the city east of downtown Los Angeles, that you that when you wrote a like say a package came, it didn't say Los Angeles, California nine zero two one zero or whatever Beverly Hills. It said uh, such and such California, and they didn't even want people to know. They told me, "Don't tell, pe don't say out loud that I live in mm mm mm," because people won't want to hire me. And the, and the bad thing is that person actually believed that. And actually, there was probably a modicum of truth to that at least, you know, at least a modicum of truth. So I left L.A. in October of 2019, fully expecting to be in Asia throughout 2020 with photos and videos and sample packs and new music and blah, 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 this and that. But I ended up in Florida. So the way COVID changed things is... That I could have moved, stayed in Florida, and no one would have known I was in Florida. People still would have thought I was in L.A. 
because everything's locked down. Everything's locked down. And during this lockdown, a lot of people are moving out of L.A. I'm not talking about Joe Rogan and uh, who else? Theo Vaughn, I think, moved. Like, comedians. I'm not talking about comedians. Elon Musk. I'm talking about industry vendors and things like that. Musicians and, and clearance professionals and such and such. So that's changing. That's changing. Especially the more people that go out of LA, like, let, let, let's say, like a, a library owner. I mean, there's a lot of library owners that don't live in LA in the first place. So them, and we'll count library owners that lived in LA and moved out of LA. They don't care if you're in LA or not. They don't even live in LA. They don't even live in LA. Let's say they live in, um, pick a place. I know of whatever place I say, there's going to be someone there. Hey, man, I'm, don't give me no hey, man emails. Let's say they move to Boston or Charlotte, North Carolina. They don't care if you're not in L.A. They're not in L.A., right? So living in L.A., unless you're like a TikToker or something, which I don't think any of y'all are, it's not as important as it used to be. And you know who, the, the, you know who really benefits from that? The industry people that grew up in L.A. and or have families now in L.A. and are not, moving under really any circumstances less traffic you ever try to drive the garage pizza in silver lake during a coachella weekend there's no cars there's nobody there because everyone's at coachella like the traffic is noticeably lighter back in the day i knew someone like maybe a, uh, 10 years ago eight nine ten years ago they moved to palm springs i said what not palm springs florida <laughs> palm springs california I'm like, whoa, you moved to Palm Springs? And it was so avant-garde that uh, a working musician would move permanently to Palm Springs. And now it's, you know, there's Joshua Tree and Palm Springs. A lot of people are moving out there. Not to mention Phoenix and uh, Texas and Las Vegas and the like. So how does that apply to you? How is that going to help you thrive? Well... If you want to thrive in 2021 and you moved away from a big, you know, I'll count Nashville in that too, LA, Chicago, New York, Nashville, maybe even Miami. If, if you moved away from one of those cities into a smaller city or a state, own it. Be the opposite of the people that want to keep it under wraps. Own it. Photos. Videos. What type of music do they have? Like if if you move to a city with like great a great style of music, start getting into that scene. You should be the person that everyone thinks of when they think of what whatever city you're in, right? If you move to Ottawa, which isn't a very small city, but you know what I'm saying. Everyone should know you're the music guy in Ottawa or lady in Ottawa. Right? You should know who all the players are. You should know all of the music nights. You should know everything music-wise about your city. You should be throwing panels, even if it's virtual Zoom panels. Okay? Because... A lot of licensees that, what does that mean? Music supervisors, film directors, ad executives, people that buy music, pay for music, pay to license music. I would guess that they're pretty tired of going on the same Zoom panels and the same panels talking about the same stuff in the same way with the same people in the audience. So what could you do? I know I've said this before. Throw a music conference in your city. Even if it's just one day. Do something to bring the entertainment industry to your city. What about a film festival? What about a music conference? Something. Okay, something. Make it virtual. It doesn't have to be in person. There's a lot of ways or there's a lot of ways to interact with people online without being stuck on some weird Zoom call or having to go to them in person. Right? 
What about all the ad agencies in your city? There's so many ad agencies out there, even super small ones. Get to know them. What about the local colleges and universities? You should be the music person. Even if it's calling up or emailing the music, you know, the dean of music at your the closest university and saying, hello, I, uh, I do music for TV or I do music for entertainment business. It's nice to meet you. You know, are there any musicians I should meet? And you might get some like really rad, like first chair harp player from China. Like, you know, the, the, the premier of China, the, the president of China, like went to school for a semester, like in Iowa. Or was it Idaho? It was either Iowa or Idaho. So now, like, there's all these farmers, like these middle-aged farmers that were friends with the president of China. And when he went to the U.S., he made a detour. I, let me look it up. I, I, it's either Iowa or Idaho. And, like, he went and kicked it with these farmers because they're friends. Let me look up here, president. I don't. I, no matter what, um, I'll get the wrong state unless I look it up. Is it Iowa? Yeah, why China's president loves Iowa, okay? So back in the day, if you were the person in Iowa, there you go. You meet people. You grow together. You do things. So that's a long, a long way of saying, find the local university or college. Ask the music dean. Do you know any great musicians? There might be some exchange students studying from other countries that could play uh, you know, indigenous instruments from their country now how cool is that when you're able to 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 call libraries or licensees and say hey i have some great rap beats and they kind of roll their eyes because there's so many rap beats in circulation right now but there's authentic peruvian pan flutes done by one of the best flute players in peru oh really oh now now isn't that a different story than you know downloading loops and dropping, well, the John Fulver loops. I'm not talking about those loops, okay. I'm talking about loops that, uh, flu, flute loops. F oh, flute, fruity loops, flute loops. That's a cool chord pack name. I guess flute loops. I guess fruity loops already took it. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. Make phone calls. Get out in the streets. Go to your local blues jam night after COVID and meet the people there. During COVID, you could always make phone calls. You could always make phone calls. And am I doing that? Yes. Okay. Next thing you could do. Every single one of these apps that you hear about, download them, learn how to work them. Okay. Now, I think you, some of y'all know how I feel about Gary Vaynerchuk. He is a genius, but I just can't stand all the Oh, hustle, da, da, da. it's just, I just don't like it, but he's a genius, okay, I'm gonna start buying his books and reading it, I just don't like all like the hustle, hustle, uh, no, okay, I just want to relax, lift weights, and do music, and I've been doing fine for the last, I don't know, eight, nine years, okay, download as many of these social media apps as you can, the ones you have heard of, look up the ones you haven't heard of, look up the best social media apps that do content like Snapchat, TikTok, etc., and download them and learn how to use them. I got a gig writing a TikTok trailer. That means a trailer for a movie, but the trailer wasn't in the theaters. It wasn't on TV. It was on TikTok. Why did I get that gig? Well, someone from the film studio called me and they said they were talking to a few different people. Okay. What did I know about TikTok? And so I said, well, I have a TikTok account. This is what I've seen. If you want to do something for TikTok, you know, we should think about doing it like this. Boom, 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 X, Y, Z, A, B, C, blah, blah, blah. And once they heard that I actually knew what I was talking about, not just with the music, but regarding the app of TikTok, their whole conversation changed. It was, when can you start? This is the deadline. It became more of like I, I got the job because I, I knew about the app and I knew how the app worked and I knew how people used it and I know like you could kind of tell what makes a good TikTok. You know, it has to be short, you know, dancing or informative or things like that, catch your eye, that kind of stuff. The other people they spoke with, 
didn't have as much experience with the actual app. They had music experience, probably more music experience than I'll ever have. But they didn't know nothing about no TikTok. A lot of shows are on Snapchat now. Snapchat really, I think they kind of turned around because once they started adding like show shows, like content, a lot of people started using them again. So go on Snapchat, download Snapchat, look at, just look what's going on. You don't have to like the content. A lot of it, I don't understand. It's like hydraulic presses mashing different things and people watch that, you know? It's like weird stuff. But watch it and see how music is used on the apps. All right? Now, I'm waiting for one of y'all, one of y'all musicians out there to do an album of songs that are seven seconds long. I believe that's how long Snapchats last. Like, each snap could be seven seconds. Do do a bunch of seven-second songs made for Snapchat. Now, that's pretty cool because there's some music supervisors out there right now, music supervising films, ads, TV shows, and a Snapchat show. Now, how do you think you're going to get their attention? Future Bass, Volume 86. Here's some more Katy Perry sound-alikes talking about we will rise up or let's go out tonight under the city lights. We're going to live our best life, all right? No. What about really good seven-second songs? That's going to catch their eye. So you have to think outside the box in the context of new media, new things. There is a news anchor right now in Asia that is not real. It's CGI. It's it's an augmented reality news anchor that has a name. So when they go, okay, let's. I don't, I don't know the name offhand. I'm not going to look that up. But let's go to so and so for for the news. And there's like a person, like an avatar, but it's not a real person. And they're giving the news. So you have to think forward, forward thinking. All right, forward thinking. Think forward. All right? Think forward. The next thing. The next thing. Specialize, 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 specialize. I could say it a hundred more times. Specialize. And most of y'all specialize will not listen. Specialize. I can't tell you how hard people roll their eyes when someone says they could do any type of music. No, you can't. You cannot. Well, Hans Zimmer could do anything. Yes, they trust Hans Zimmer because he has a facility of people and of popular world-renowned musicians in most genres. Yes, they could do stuff. If you're paying me a million dollars to score a film, I could do anything. Yes, of course. In that context... But that's the exception to the exception to the exception to the exception to the exception exception of the rule. You cannot do everything. What can you do? All right. What can you do? And you know how you prove what you can do? You send music out. Many times I send music to somebody. And they don't listen to it. I send it. I send more music. They don't listen to it. I send more and more and more. And then they might listen to something. And then I send more and more and more. They don't listen to it. And then they listen to a couple more things. And then they call me. Hey, we need a custom piece of music for this movie. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff you've been sending. It looks like it's in this. It's in this genre. Can you do this custom piece? Oh yeah, heck yeah. Why do they know I could do the custom piece? Because I send them music that I've made that sounds like the custom piece that they eventually need. All right? Yes, get pigeonholed into something. Yes, go for it. Don't you want to be known as the the one of the best country instrumental producers in Hollywood or the best hip hop or the best um Spanish language pop person? Yes. Yes, you don't want to be known as someone that could do everything. Uh, everyone that I know that could do everything, not named Hans Zimmer or, or Gregson one of the Gregson Williams boys. They're scrambling. They get gigs every once in a while, but they don't have consistent gigs. All right? So to get consistent gigs, be known for something. Right? Be known for something. And some people say, well, what if someone does Polish pop music really well? There's not enough money to make 
in LA off that, good. Go to Poland. Or call someone in Poland. Have someone represent your music in Poland. Or Germany or, or whatever. You have to specialize now more than anything because licensees, that's music supervisors, film directors, ad executives, people who pay for music, preface. I'm always going to say that when I say licensees. It used to be they wanted the best music. Then it was they wanted the cheapest music, right? Cheapest. Now, in my opinion, they want the best value. So they will pay if it saves them time and money in the long run. Do they want to be on five Zoom calls and get something cheap, or do they want to be on one Zoom call and pay triple? A lot of people would rather be on one Zoom call and pay triple instead of having to go back to other meetings, other phone calls, just to save money. Okay? Because a lot of these streaming companies are getting money poured into them. And all it takes is an executive to say, you know what? This person right here who listens to the John Fulford podcast, let's pay them triple because they really specialize, and I think they can get it done. They've been sending us music for a year now. It's really good. They've done other things in their community. They're the assistant music director of the Detroit Lions over in Detroit. They really know what's going on rather than, oh, yeah, there's this person here in L.A. doesn't listen to the John Fulford podcast, says they could do anything and everything. See what I'm saying? See, that's the difference. So you want to be typecast. And then when you start landing things, there's one thing, then you could branch out into other projects. Then you could do other things, right? Then you could do other things. Or start a library and brand yourself as a library, but then you need so many releases that, it, I mean, you just need a wall of music. But that's a library. That's not a composer. For that, you need sales skills. You need to hire people, uh, metadata people, yada, yada, yada. But if it's just going to be you, maybe you and a couple of buddies, make a decision. What type of music is best that you do? And then go 100% all in on that until you have gigs that you can't even take because you're so busy. And I know a lot of people say that. I got so much work. I, I have to turn down work. Doing work for no money up front barely, is barely work. Sometimes it is. I'm not going to, you know, sometimes it is. But blindingly blindingly submitting to every brief hoping to land something that's not work i'm talking about work with deadlines and you know briefs and briefs that change up and things like that that is work so pick something and go for it all right well how do you know what to pick that's my next that's my next point how do you know what type of music to do to focus on in 2021 I have my idea for a couple of genres, which I'm not going to share here because I don't want to give everyone the magic key. And I'm not talking about the one T French pop song magic key. Shout out Eddie Granfier, one of the writers. Listen to music, right? Listen. Someone goes, yeah, uh, you know that show MTV Challenge? They sent me a brief. I don't even watch that show. It was a Bill Clinton impersonation. Well, if you don't watch the show, how are you gonna? How are you gonna? Why are you gonna do music and you don't even know how it sounds like? Well, they told me in the brief how they want it to sound. Okay, cool, but do you, you don't watch the show. Watch the show. Listen to music. Listen to Snapchat music. Listen to the music on TikTok. Right. Listen to how music is listened to. What do you mean? Listen to how music is listened to. My guy Saint John. I've been a St. John fan since like 2015, 2016. He uh, blew up. Because on TikTok, some re a, a remixer took his song, pitched his thick Lenny Kravitz-esque vocal, like I think an entire octave, so he sounds like a chipmunk, and all of a sudden his song blew up. Because people interact with music differently now. On I keep saying like TikTok and that new app Clubhouse. I got an invitation. Thank you very much. And on Snapchat and on different, you know, Instagram, things like that. Listen to how people listen to music. Is your song danceable? TikTok. It either has to be super danceable or super funny or super sad. If you make super sad songs, TikTok's a great place. 
go on there and, and swipe around and you'll see just like some things are just sad. People put like posting sad things, emotional content, right? So listen to how music is being listened to. If there's a sci-fi show, are they listening to the radio? Some sci-fi shows are super futuristic, and then some shows that are in the future look like Star Wars, like in the desert, and there's no real, like there's technology when they take off in the spaceship, but there's no like nightclubs, if you will. But other shows like Altered Carbon, which I'm really kind of sad that they canceled that show. It was really, 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 really good. There's nightclubs and all sorts of century, century overload type stuff, you know? So listen to how music is being used. Listen to how music is being listened to. You know? So right now, it's the hip-hop beats, most of them have guitar in them now. Most of them have guitar. But is that trend going to continue? I, I don't know. Uh, a lot of big producers now are saying they're not putting guitar in any more of their new beats. But they might be dropping their beats. for the, They might have stuff ready to go until late 2021. My big money K-pop cut was written was written years before it came out, and once it was recorded by the band, it was about four months before it came out, and that's after it was recorded. So it was probably you know starting to get written to in Korea a year or a little less than a year before. So things there's a while before things come out. Right, so something that was written today might not come out till summertime. So you have to be ready for the next thing. Okay, the next thing. So you have to thrive in twenty twenty one, not just survive. Right, value. Licensees want value. How can you bring value to them? I'm recapping, by the way. I know I already talked about this. And instead of saying. How cheaply can I do it? Say, how much value can I bring? Get in that mindset. You know what I'm saying? How much value? Speaking of value, Amazon affiliate link. Click on the link. When you're buying your Amazon stuff, you're buying that pair of shoes. You're buying that uh, Whole Foods container of mulberries. Right? You're buying that weird mannequin doll that I don't really know why you have. That is kind of weird. But when you buy it, click on the Amazon affiliate link, link in the description. We get a commission. Jeff and Mackenzie Bezos pay us. You don't. Okay, it doesn't cost you any more money. All right. Also, I'll recap. John Fulford Music presents Cool Chords Volume 1. Free chord pack, royalty free. Link in the description on the YouTube version of the podcast. Link in the description of the Apple podcast version of the podcast before i go let's talk about cash grab records rookie of the year christmas ep three songs already came out came out on the 10th link in the description as well if you want to vibe vibe with that that's the first release off of my new record label cash grab records boy i might be all budgeted out for 2021 i already got some bands in the pipeline recording stuff now and some labels, some labels were interested, but I don't want to work with labels. I am a label. They said, how about we record the songs and you pitch them? I said, uh uh-huh. I'm not a licensing company. I'm not a licensing company. I don't do that anymore. Okay, I have to be involved in the whole shebang. You know, case in point, label wanted to talk, set up the phone call. They don't even call reschedule they flake on the reschedule so imagine imagine if a sync comes in right a big sync license and this happened to me a couple times when i used to work with labels and stuff big sync license would come in can't get a hold of the label oh they're on vacation they'll be back like on tuesday well we have a big fat trailer license yeah can they look at it back on tuesday things are crazy and that's that chet voice that's for labels and it's a lot of the same labels that complain because they're, they're bands or they're not landing any sync licenses. Well, that's not going to happen with Cash Grab Records. All right? That's not going to happen with Cash Grab Records. 
So rookie of the year. Uh, that boy group LFO gave us a shout out on their Instagram page. That's pretty cool. Like that, they did that joint that goes, um, I like girls that wear Abercrombie and Fitch. Chinese food makes me sick. Death, was Brad Fischetti from LFO owned 111 Records, which Rookie of the Year put out some albums on back like 2007 ish. So go, go look that up. Great music, great vocal, great production. Shout out to the people who did it. I don't want to mention them by name on the thing because I don't want them. I mentioned Dan Ford once on the podcast, well, I guess twice now, and people will be sending them music, okay? So let me just say this. If you send Dan Ford music, it better be damn good music, okay? Don't send him no nonsense now. Y'all be hitting him up. Oh, I heard your name on the John Fulford podcast. Cool. Send him some great music so he looks good. So he looks good. He goes to his people and says, hey, I just found this like rad Peruvian pant flute player. All right, don't send him no, no whack nonsense. You send the whack nonsense to me and I'll check it out. Music licensing podcast at gmail.com. Music licensing podcast at gmail.com. Okay, that's it for today. Oh, that rhymed. That's it for today, everybody. I hope this was valuable to you. Let me know what you think you could do in 2021 to thrive. Let me know what you think I could do to thrive. All right? Because I'm not, I don't know everything. I, I know very little about very little, but I admit it. So that's it for today. Uh, again, email me music licensing at, what is it? Music licensing podcast at gmail.com. That's music licensing podcast at gmail.com, and I will catch you next time.